have soft real time system and hard real time system so let's see how real time cpu scheduling has been done in those type of computer systems let's see uh, real time cpu scheduling so it we have two type of system soft real time system and hard real time system so we need a different type of algorithm for both of the systems because they are having a different nature in soft real time system what will happen that in real time system we give no guarantee to do a particular task but uh, it gives uh, just a preference over non critical tasks so what is written here in soft real time system it provides no guarantee as to when a critical real time process will be scheduled uh, they guaranteed only that the process will be given preference over non critical process so in soft real time system uh, we are giving no guarantee to a process that it will be executed in a given time frame but we will surely assure them that we will give you a preference over non critical processes non critical process you can think of as those processes which are running in the background right like batch processes you can think of that uh, they are non critical processes so in soft real time system uh, algorithm which we have to design is uh, something like that that it can only give a preference over them on non critical processes so what about hard real time systems in hard real time system they have stricter requirements because if in hard real time system we are not able to system is not able to perform that task which has assigned in a given time frame then that means that we have done a no job because uh, take an analogy from a uh, like a hospital suppose a critical patient has arrived and if it is not treated in given time frame then uh, uh, doctor said that if you have uh, take them before 10 minutes or 15 minutes then we have to do something and now we are sorry that we are not able to save the life of this patient right so this is something like that that we have given a no service at all so in hard real time system they have stricter requirements a task must be serviced by its deadline we have to service a task to its deadline only because if you are not able to do so then service after the deadline has expired it is the same as no service at all because uh, that critical process has to be executed in given time frame only so in a real time cpu scheduling uh, there are two types soft real time system and hard real time system in soft real time system we have a little flexibility of a time that uh, they can uh, exceed their given time frame but uh, we have to give them assurance that they can be they will be executed uh, and given preference over non critical process whereas in hard real time system we have stricter requirements we have to uh, process them in given time frame only so uh, if you are not able to do so then this is the same as that we are we have not given them service at all so let's see so whenever we are talking about real time system uh, that they have to given their task in a given time frame then there is a concept of latency so we have to minimize the latency now latency is what latency is something that uh, a particular task coming a given time and then when you are able to given them first response to solve that particular uh, task then this is called latency now consider the event driven nature of a real time system <clears throat> what is event driven excuse me <clears throat> what is event driven nature of real time system means uh, whenever any event occurs in a system then that has to perform the action based upon that nature event so consider the event driven nature of a real time system the system is typically waiting for an event in a real time to occur now events may arise either in software or in hardware means uh, there may be an emergency in related to in software or a hardware then we refer to event latency as the amount of time that elapses from when an event occurs when it is serviced so what is event latency it is the time, amount of time which elapses when an event occurs and when it is serviced means this is the time difference when you first service uh, given your service to particular task and when it was arrived this is just like your what uh, 
uh, response time this is the response time of a task suppose you have uh, gone with your bike for servicing in any service center now at you arrives at 9 am at that service center and uh, that first person come and uh, take your bike at 9:30 am then there what is the uh, response time this is the 30 minutes time that you have taken in the first action upon your request so we refer the event latency as the amount of time that elapses from an event occurs to when it is serviced so let's have a diagram so that you can better understand suppose here at time 0 the event first occurs means that uh, you have at gone there at 9 am for servicing of your bike now what is event latency this is the difference between t1 minus t0 so what is t1 t1 is the real time system response to it means this is the uh, t1 time at, that is 9:30 am that uh, person at the service center uh, responds to your request so t1 minus t0 that is 9:30 am minus 9 am this is called event latency uh, here you can see that in x axis we are having time you can understand that uh, t1 and t0 is, having the time unit so what is the time difference t1 minus t0 this is called the event latency It's very simple concept uh, that we have to minimize this latency because in a real time system we, as the name tell you that this is a real time system means you have to do things in a real time only so if this a diff if, if, t1 minus t0 time is too long then uh, you cannot say that this is a real time system behavior right so we have to minimize the latency latency is what uh, the amount of time that elapses from when an event occurs to when it is serviced means t1 minus t0 uh, and this diagram is uh, your marks booster whenever this question arises come in your examination then uh, please make this diagram also so that you can explain this diagram and you can have uh, one page of answer of this particular diagram only because you have to explain that uh, at t0 that event e occurs firstly occurs and you have an example suppose that uh, in a any example just i told you that uh, take an example of a bike that it comes arrives for a servicing at t0 and at t1 you get the first service so this is called event latency right so this is up to you how you are going to explain your answer and uh, this is how we have to understand that we have to minimize the latency so let's see now how many type of latency are there uh first one is interrupt latency what is interrupt latency interrupt latency refers to the period of time from the arrival of an interrupt at the cpu to the start of the routine that service the interrupt interrupt means uh, suppose you are working some you are working on something and uh, suppose your younger brother come and uh, knock your door and ask for something means uh, it uh, she, he or she interrupt you right uh, he interrupt you in uh, what you are doing so uh, when you have you are interrupted in doing your particular job and switching on something else then this is called interrupt latency it refers to the period of time from the arrival of an interrupt at the cpu to start of the routine that service the interrupt means your younger brother come at point of time and then what is the time taken by you to service its request this is called interrupt latency now when an interrupt occurs the operating system must first complete the instructions it is executing and determine the type of interrupt that occurs so firstly what operating system has to do it has to find out what type of interrupt it is which has occurs in the system whether it is a software interrupt or a hardware interrupt now it must then save the state it must then save the state of the current process before servicing the interrupt using the specific interrupt service routine which is called isr this is very important routine that is interrupt service routine the total time required to perform this task it is the interrupt latency now how it works let's have a diagram as you can see here that we are having isr interrupt service routine here and uh, here are the tasks running suppose uh, you are doing something with your computer system and uh, your brother come with an interrupt now firstly you have to find out what is determine the type of interrupt means so what is the requirement of your younger brother whether he wants to uh, wants to play with you like a physical game or wants to play with on your computer system this type of uh, understanding you have to find out and then you switched 
have to do the context with me so one process you are already doing then you have to interrupt and go for this uh, another process which has arrives in the system that is your younger brother and this is uh, done by the interrupt service routine only and the total time required to perform this task is called the interrupt latency as you can see here uh, you are uh, running a task uh, this is the timeline here you can see task t running here from where we started and where once your context switch is done and you have taken it for the service in through the interrupt service routine this is the time gap this is called the interrupt latency means whenever a first interrupt comes and when you it gives it service this is called interrupt latency i am again explaining what is interrupt latency it is refers to the period of time from the arrival of an interrupt at the cpu to the start of the routine that service the interrupt so uh, once it uh, um, whenever a process arrives you have to understand what type of interrupt it is find out its requirement then do the context switch and then send it for the execution and then when an interrupt occurs the operating system first complete the instruction it is executing it has to execute complete the instruction whatever it is taking and then it find out the type of the interrupt that has been occurred and then it must save the state of the current process as we you know that we have to save the state so that uh, when once this interrupt execution has been completed then we can uh, reprocess that process which we are running earlier so it must save the state of the current process before servicing the interrupt using the specific interrupt service routine the total time required to perform this task is the interrupt latency and there is another latency we are having which is called dispatch latency so what is dispatch latency let's see the amount of time required for the scheduling dispatcher to stop one process and start another is known as dispatch latency this you have already seen when we are studying dispatcher so this it, it is the job of dispatcher to stop the one process and uh, start another so this is how dispatch latency is defined the amount of time required for the scheduling dispatcher to stop one process and start another is known as dispatch latency uh, what uh, dispatcher has to do it has to save the state of the one process which is uh, just printed and it has to load the state of the another process which has arrived into the system all the memory requirement all other things has to be uh, fetched by the dispatcher only so the activity or the time duration it has taken this is called the dispatch latency let's have a diagram to understand this better uh, suppose uh, this is the event uh, timeline here event occurs or in the end we are having a response to event here is the event and this is the response to interval response interval that first time you have given the response to whatever the event has occurred in the system now what are the activities which are in between that is firstly we have to process the interrupt means you have to find out uh, uh, the processing of this interrupt that uh, a process has arrived now process made available so there is a called dispatch latency what is dispatch latency in which we have to find out any conflicts if we are having and then we have to dispatch conflict means that we have to find out the priority things that which process arrive whether we have to uh, send it to the cpu or not and this is the timeline we are having and then real time process execution time is here started from this so event is there and response to event in the end now the conflict phase of dispatch latency has two components as you can see here we are having a conflict phase of dispatch latency now what we have to done in this first one preemption of any process running in the kernel we have to firstly preempt any process which is running in the kernel and then what we have to do uh, and then what we have to do release by low priority process of resources needed by high priority process means what we have to do uh, in conflict phase first one we have to preempt any process which is running in the kernel and second one as i told you you have to find out the priority and that if any high priority this high priority process has arrived in the system then what you have to do you have to take the resources from the low priority process and as i given you the example that you are sitting with your friends in your drawing room and uh, your father with 
their friends have arrived in the drawing room, then you have to leave that resource, right? So in similar manner, what we have to do, this dispatcher has to do in conflict phase, it firstly have to preempt that you have to go from the drawing room and uh, you have to release all the resources. So release by low priority process of resources needed by a high priority process, which has just uh, arrives. So this is how we are having a dispatch latency. So diagrams are must, you have to draw the diagram in the examination. Uh, so better understand, I am again explaining what is dispatch latency. The amount of time required for the scheduling dispatcher to stop one process and start another is known as dispatch latency. So here is an event occur. You have to interrupt, process, interrupt, the, interrupt the process which has arrived and then process made available to you. Then you have to resolve the conflict means you have to preempt the first process which is executing and then release the low priority processes needed by the high priority process. And then you have to dispatch this for the execution and there is a real time process execution. And this is the time you call that response to event. So total time is the response interval. This is called dispatch latency. Now, what is priority with scheduling in a real time system? And this is very important because in a real time system, we have to perform in a real time. So whenever a high priority process comes, that has to be executed in given time frame. Now, the most important feature of a real time operating system is to respond immediately to a real-time process as soon as the process requires the CPU. So this is the um, crux of this real-time scheduling that whenever a uh, high priority process has arrived or any process has comes into the real-time system, we have to respond immediately. Otherwise, uh, it uh, loses the criteria that uh, this system is a real-time system because you are not able to uh, perform or respond in a given time frame. So the, the most important feature of a real-time operating system is to respond immediately to a real-time process as soon as the process requires the CPU. Now, the scheduler for a real-time operating system must support a priority-based algorithm with preemption. So what sort of algorithm we have to apply in such a system? We have to uh, use a priority-based algorithm with preemption, means so we cannot have a non-preemptive algorithm in this. Why we cannot have a non-preemptive algorithm here in, in this type of scheduling real-time system? Because if, suppose you are running a process and then a high priority process arrive in the system, then in non-preemptive algorithm, you cannot preempt until and unless that process has finished execution. Now, suppose that process having a long bus time and you are running that process, uh, till its uh, completion and by the time the high priority process which has arrived in a real time system, you are not able to process its request in given time frame. Then this is the same as what? That you are not provided service at all. So you cannot have a non preemptive algorithm in such type of system. So what is the solution? We have to do a preemptive algorithm which must be a priority based because we have to consider the priority also. Now, providing a preemptive priority based scheduler only guarantees soft real time functionality. Now, suppose for example, you have a, have a solution that, okay, we will use preemptive algorithm and we will use a priority based algorithm to solve the real time scheduling in a real time system. Now, as we have seen that we are having two type of system, real time system. First one is soft real time system. In soft real time system, what it is that we can we do not give any guarantee that it will give uh, it will run in a real means uh, in, it will run in a given time frame. But we assure that we okay we will give it priority over non critical process. So if you are having a preemptive algorithm and that runs a priority based algorithm, it can give you only soft real time functionality only. Why? Because in a priority based algorithm and preemption, uh, you have to first find out that uh, what is the priority and uh, then you have to preempt and it, it will take a lot of time. Uh, so you can have only soft real time functionality. So providing a preemptive priority based scheduler only guarantees soft real time system. So what we have to do for hard real time system? 
for hard real time scheduling a process may have to announce its deadline requirements to the scheduler means in hard real time system process beforehand has to tell its deadline that we have to be finish this execution by this time only this is called hard real time system uh, otherwise uh, you cannot find out that uh, you have to do this in a given time frame now then using a technique known as admission control algorithm the scheduler does one of the two things what it will do uh, so if a hard real time system what will happen it gives you the time frame that uh, we have the this deadline now you have to process the request so we need a admission control algorithm what this admission control algorithm will take it will first identify that okay do we have resources to execute this process in a given deadline if we have then we will uh, take this process otherwise we leave this process and this is why this is called admission control algorithm if we are having resources and can process this pro is request in given deadline then we will admit that process for the execution in our system otherwise we deny that we are sorry we cannot admit you for execution because we do not have sufficient resources or we or we will uh, have uh, not that much type of uh, expertise to solve this in a given deadline whatever i am just giving an example that it will uh, deny you admission for the execution so in hard uh, real time system Um, what we have another type of uh, a module which is called admission control algorithm which needs to find out that uh, what is the deadline of a process which was announced by the process and then it has to look at its resources that if it can uh, uh, solve its uh, execute uh, means process its execution in given deadline or cannot if it can uh, resolve in or execute that process is given deadline that it will admit otherwise it will not admit so let's see what two things this uh, admission control algorithm will do first one it either admits the process guaranteeing that the process will complete on time that is at on its deadline means uh, if it can either admit the process giving you the guarantee that you will process in will be executed in given time or reject the request at all because it is impossible uh, and cannot guarantee that task will be serviced by its deadline so reject the request as impossible if it cannot guarantee that the task will be serviced by its deadline and how it is identifying that you cannot able to service this request uh, this admission control algorithm will uh, look at all the resources available for the uh, completion of this process and uh, do we have all sufficient resources for execution L like time and space kind of things uh, it look at that uh, do we have a sufficient time to meet this deadline for the execution <clears throat> or do we have resources for the completion of this process at given deadline so this is the theoretical concept of real time scheduling Uh, in which we have seen that uh, in a real time system we are having two type of system soft real time and hard real time in soft real time <clears throat> if we are having a priority based algorithm and what we having a preemptive algorithm also then we can assure that we are can solve the requirement of a soft real time system but in hard real time system what happens that we have to look at the deadline also for this we have a, a extra algorithm or we can say a module which is called admission control algorithm that will take care of that if a process arrives in the system that you are giving the guarantee that the process will be executed on time then you will admit it otherwise you reject the request that you cannot guarantee that the task will be serviced by its deadline so uh, this is the concept of uh, behind the real time systems uh, scheduling <clears throat> i am again revising today's class what we have studied in today's class now this is a real time cp scheduling concept uh, totally theoretical one you have to just have an idea how things works in real time uh, cpu scheduling so soft real time system gives you no guarantee but it gives you preference over non critical processes what hard real time system do and they have a strict requirement it must be serviced by its deadline otherwise uh, this is just like same as you have not given service at all now latency is what this is the time taken by you to respond the request you i am 
referring to CPU or a system. Consider the event-driven nature of a real-time system. The system is typically waiting for an event in real time to occur. Then event may arise either in software or in hardware. Now we refer to an event latency as the amount of time that elapses from when an event occurs to when it is serviced. This diagram is very important that you have to must draw in the answer here you can see that in a time frame in x axis we are having t0 when an event e occurs and at time t1 when you first uh, a real time system responds to this event and this t1 minus t0 time difference is called the event latency means what time you have taken to uh, service the request now we are having two type of latency first one is interrupt latency and second one is dispatch latency now what is interrupt latency it interrupt latency refers to the period of time from the arrival of an interrupt at the cpu to the start of the routine that service the interrupt so firstly it has to find out the type of interrupt we are having like it is a software interrupt or a hardware interrupt then we need a special module which is called isr that is interrupt service routine what this interrupt service routine will do it will uh, preempt a process which is running in the operating system and then do the context switch and then you can have the process for the execution. So the, the total time required to perform this task is the interrupt latency. Means uh, you have to save the state of the current process before servicing the interrupt. Then you have to find out type of interrupt we are having. And then we do the context switch. So this is the time taken in the interrupt service routine to process the request. Now, what is dispatch latency? In dispatch latency, we have seen that uh, the amount of time required for the scheduling dispatcher to stop one process and start another is known as dispatch latency. Here you can see here that uh, in event and, and there is a response um, bar is there. You can find out that firstly interrupt processing is done and then process made available to uh, the CPU. And then we are having some conflicts resolution, which is like preemption of any process running in the kernel and find out the releasing the resources from the low priority process to give it to the high priority process. This is done in this conflict zone. And then we have dispatching of the process, like saving the state of previous process and giving it to the uh, new. And then a real time process execution has started from here and the total time taken this is called a response interval. Okay, so this is called dispatch latency means the amount of time required for the scheduling dispatcher to stop one process and start another is known as dispatch latency. A priority based scheduling how to done for soft real time system what we can require we required only preemptive type nature algorithm and a priority based algorithm in this manner we can solve the problem of soft real time functionality and but in hard real time system what we have to do we have to give the guarantee if we can solve this problem or not so in hard real time system we need an extra module which is called admission control algorithm and what is the job of this admission control algorithm this admission control algorithm has to uh, look at the deadline of the processes uh, sent by the process so and look at all the resources in hand if it can solve uh, the or uh, give the perform the execution of the process in given deadline, then what it can do, it can admit that process, otherwise it can simply reject the request. So it either guarantee that the process will be complete on time by looking at its resources, or it can simply reject the request as impossible by the system that it cannot guarantee that the task will be serviced by its deadline. So these are the concepts we are having in a real time system. So this is the total theoretical one. In examination, uh, we are having some questions on this, like uh, uh, give a short note on uh, real-time CPU scheduling. Then you have to just uh, write it down the main points, like how you can uh, schedule in soft real-time system and hard real-time system. So not very much important in examination perspective, but this was in our syllabus. So we have to study this and we must aware that how things works 
if we don't have to do anything on that still we must have knowledge about these kind of things so just revise those things and uh, you are good to go and in examination viva also sometime uh, we are having some questions on what is the difference between soft real time scheduling and hard real time scheduling then you have to simply say that in hard real time scheduling we have to do one more thing that we need an extra module which is called admission control algorithm which uh, either admits the process or reject the process based upon the what uh, its requirement of deadline right so in a soft real time system we can simply do this scheduling with the help of what and like a preemptive algorithm nature of a priority scheduling so with this we can solve the soft real time scheduling and for hard real time system we need one more module which is called admission control algorithm so uh, this kind of things you can explain very easily but and if it uh, comes for any short notes on that then uh, give a full page uh, diagram of those diagrams we, i have shown you like in dispatch latency and interrupt latency and then uh, you are good to go and this will be more uh, good for any type of questions for any theoretical answer okay so we are done with today's class uh, we will discuss some more concept left with uh, in unit 1 i guess in in this week we can finish our unit